And straight away, let's get into it. Glenn, we beat Manchester City over the weekend. It was um, uh, a good performance, like one of those performances where you have everything apart from the goals. The rest of the things uh, we did very well. The rest of the um, the game was actually, uh, you know, sports on. Everything was absolutely sports on. And Arsenal are now flying. We are cruising, you would say, on top of the table with Tottenham Hotspur. I don't want us to be on top of the table with Tottenham. There's nothing to do. They've had a very fantastic start. And I think that that leaves the question, have we now opened up um, a three-man, four-man um, title race? And uh, is Arsenal genuinely part of that you know, title race? I think, yeah, I think we've always been, I think going into the season, we expected to, like, if we went into the season and then after two months we were not in the title race, we'd have been like, come on, like after last season yeah. we've improved yeah. the likes of Declan Rice and the team and we're not in the title race. I was very surprised, you know, some people... Some Man United fans, some Man United channels and Tottenham fans, they were like, you know what? Arsenal, they're going to finish sixth and seventh. And I was like, how? You know, and yeah. during the during the preseason, during the transfer, you know, people are like, every other team will improve. You know, um, Chelsea will improve, Liverpool will improve, Tottenham will improve, they'll buy players. And I was like, so Arsenal doesn't have money to buy players or yeah, what? I mean, I mean that was like, a big question. Yeah, I expect us to buy players as well. Now, you might say, obviously, the injury to someone like a team at the beginning of the season can, can like, um, cost you or hurt you a little bit. But he wasn't in our back for last season. I don't think yeah. our back was a problem until, like, Saliba got injured. So, he had to maybe replace Jaka and then maybe some people wanted a striker. I needed another midfielder. But I still felt we had a stronger squad than last season. Last season, at the beginning of the campaign, we still had players like Lokong in the lineup. People were not really big fans of him until, like, January, I think that's when he was at Arsenal. Uh, we had we had many players, like many, let's say, average players still on the bench and players who needed to leave, like holding, no disrespect to him. But right now, I'm looking at our bench and I'm like, yes, this player can come on, this player can come on, that one can, can, can come on as well. And you only have players like Martinelli, Trossard, Saka, you have to be in a title race. So the only team, as I said at the beginning of the season, confidently, if Arsenal finish above Man City, we win the title. I don't think there's any other team that can finish above um, those two. Yes, Liverpool have improved. I didn't expect them to be this good, but they are, it looks like they're back. They've improved their, improved their midfield as well. Didn't expect Tottenham to be this good, obviously, um, with um, Ken leaving. But you never know, you know. Um, what if Son gets an injury, Madison gets an injury? I don't think they'll be that good if one of those players gets um, gets injured. Yeah. But for us, we've seen that we can win a game without Saka. We've we've been without uh, nearly for six games. We won games without him as well. So I think we have a very good squad. And the truth is, um, yes, we might have bottled it last season or whatever, but we learned from it. The players learned from it. The manager learned from it. Even the fan base, they know how to control our emotions maybe through certain situations. We've learned from it, from it as well. Liverpool did it in... Um, 2017, 20, oh, 2018, 2019, yeah. they were so close to winning the title. The very next in the COVID season, Liverpool won it. So you have to learn um, experience. We've seen which games we made mistakes, which games like West Ham away, Liverpool away, how to maybe manage a lead better. Um, at has kind of approached games differently this season, maybe more control, don't give the opponent too many chances. I've not recently checked the stats, but around two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think we're the team that maybe number two in terms of um, shots on target faced. Like we don't give um, the other team a lot of shots to, yeah. uh, they, we don't allow them a lot of shots. And you've seen it against Man City as well. They only had four shots, the least they had under uh, um, Guardiola since Guardiola came. So I like the way you control games. I definitely expect us to be in the title race. And if my, if we finish above Man City, we are going to win it. I still um, stick with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, when when started the season, I said this, and I still stick to my point. I also said it to you uh, on your channel. If Arsenal, this campaign, get to 90 points, it will be only Man City. And I predicted Arsenal to go up to 90 points. It was 85 last campaign, um, and I thought we really did very well. There were a couple of games where I thought uh, we could have done better. Brighton at home, Newcastle at home, Brentford at home. Uh, you know, at the Goodson Park probably as well. But I still I still back Arsenal to get up to 90 points. Whether we win the title, um, that depends on Man City, how well, how good they will be. They've started off very well, by the way. People really do undermine them, by the way. But yeah. they, have, they had started off very well. They've, they've not drawn a single game this campaign. They've lost two and won uh, the first six. So that is 18 points for them. So in my opinion, we are real title contenders. We are actually there. And there's, um, th th there is that statistic that you actually read to me um, that Arsenal have actually collected more points this campaign from their first eight games as compared to last campaign. It, it was really, re it, it was, um, uh, you know, it, it made me believe because I kind of 
the way we've played this campaign is not as satisfying, you know, on the pitch as we were last campaign. Last campaign, it was fluid. Every team we played um, in the first 20 games literally bowed down every team. Even games where we didn't get the result or we didn't win, we looked very good. But, and I want to ask you this. Do you think um, we are playing a dangerous game? Like, the for example, the Nottingham Forest result, the Crystal Palace result, which was, um, again, very, very narrow. Um, and then the, the Manchester United game that we won late. Are we playing a dangerous game as compared to last season where 20 minutes in, you're 2-0 up and you're winning games, right? Do you think it's, it's kind of a dangerous game or do you think it's just a different season and teams are just much better? Different season. Let me just reread um, those two stats. So last season we had 21 points at this time. Right now we have 20. Yeah. But the, the eight teams that we played last season compared to right now like for example man City, we lost to them last time we've beaten them everton we lost to them last time we've beaten them and fulham tottenham we drew after we beaten them so i think this one we have 20 points against those teams and last time we had 18 points so in terms of compare compared to those two teams all those teams we played last season compared to this season we have more points than um than last season so i don't think it's a dangerous game i think um Yes, maybe people want us to like play fluid football like we did against like Leicester at the beginning of last season where we scored four goals and the football was amazing or against yeah. Bournemouth where we had like two, we were two nil up within the first 10 minutes. Yes, it was good. But um, I don't think we've actually played that bad this season, honestly. Yeah, yeah. A game like Nottingham Forest, I think we took uh, the foot off the pedal. Yes, we were two goals up and then we got two comfortable. That I agree. Maybe we should have gone for a third goal, fourth goal, because right now we're only one goal away from being top of the table. Maybe scoring those yeah. goals would have helped us. A game like Crystal Palace, we were down to 10 men for like 40 minutes. I think we did well to get that one nil win. All those teams in the top 10, not all of them are going to go to Crystal Palace and win, believe me. Going away to Everton, for us, it's always been hard. Like playing Man City, it's always been hard. Um, Tottenham, I really wanted us to win, but we didn't really like draw the game because we were bad i literally think like we drew that game because we gave them a goal so if we are to cut off mistakes last season this time we had considered eight goals we've now considered six goals this season and from those six goals at least five of them are mistakes fulham mistake um Saka, i think and zinchenko man united mistake harvard um if you look at tottenham mistake judging and most of those goals have been considered at home so we're not conceding goals um we're not allowing the other team many chances which is good yeah. i've not watched a game this and i'm like wow this other team is getting so many chances we're going to be in a lot of trouble no it's always coming from ourselves mistakes so the difference between now this season and last season last season you're giving the other team yes we was creating more chances yes but um, in terms of um, giving the other team chances and shots on target and shots off target, all that, we are defending better. That is why we are able to like keep it down to four shots on goal by Man City. Yeah. Man City having four shots in a game, that is crazy. Man City usually yeah, have four shots like of. within one it's minute. Really unheard of, yeah. Like I, I was so happy that like when I saw that and I was like, wow, Man City have actually not taken the chance. Um, like shots. Then people are like. Oh, it's because Man City did not play well. No, it's because the likes of Declan Rice and Saliba did not allow them to play well, did not give them those chances. Tom Yasu came on, they um, they kept um, Doku quiet after he had looked very um, lively for like five minutes. So it's up to us as well to make it look better. And um, as in, yes, I know last one we beat Fulham, this one we've drawn. I know last one we beat Tottenham, this one we've drawn. But if you choose to look at the positive as well, last one we lost to Man City, we've beaten them. Last one we lost to Everton, we've beaten them. Now it's all about now... Um, capitalizing on this result against Man City. Let's see how we do against Chelsea. Obviously, beating Man City, and then we go lose to Chelsea and Sheffield. This doesn't really matter. But if you go and then beat Chelsea right away, it looks good. So I don't think we're putting ourselves in any danger at all. I think um, we are controlling games more. We're having more possession. We're not allowing the other teams too many chances. So I'm, I'm happy. Personally, I've not really agreed with people saying, now you're not having a good season. I think we have a better squad. I'm like, yes, I don't feel like there's any game that we should really have lost. So I'm definitely okay with how we are playing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, talk to me in the comment box below. Do you agree with Glenn? Do you think um, Arsenal are much better in terms of game management, in terms of uh, being a title winning side? We are not giving away possession. We're not giving away, um, you know, a lot of shots, a lot of chances to the opponent. And in the end, that has resulted Arsenal in Arsenal controlling games better and winning games that, you know, look far more comfortable with actually, a, you know, a lesser scoreline. So I'll, I'll talk about that um, Everton game at the Goodson Park. It was a 1-0. We all agree. 
but it looked so comfortable. It was so comfortable. You couldn't even think that um, Everton had a chance uh, to come back in that game. Even, you know, the scare was the goal was going to come late. And let's talk about that, actually, Glenn. Liverpool are scoring, can score goals for fun. So look at Darwin Nunes, you look at Cody Gakpo, you look at uh, Mo Salah, you look at Diaz, you look at uh, Dominic, Dominic Soboslai. That is a lot of quality to give you a lot of goals, right? You look at Manchester City, if they get Kevin Dubrun back, it's a guarantee. He's a cheat code. They're going to score a lot of goals, right? Tottenham Hotspur and Arsenal. And, and this is the reason why I would write off Tottenham Hotspur. I do not think Tottenham will maintain the level of performance first and foremost. But I also think that they depend on Bissouma. And in the final third, goals are not going to be coming and draining as at Liverpool and Man City. Do you think at, this, at some point in time, Arsenal will be affected by... You know, that when those decisive goals don't come, for example, if that goal for Trossard at, at Everton didn't come, do you think that would actually, do you, do you think in the future that could affect us a little bit? I don't think so. Like the games that we've played this season, um, 10 games, yeah. I mean, you still scored four against Bournemouth, you still scored four against PSV, you still scored three yeah. against Man United, two against Fulham, against Tottenham. I don't think we're struggling for goals. And here and there, we've sometimes we've not had Matnili on the pitch, sometimes we've not had Sack on the pitch, yeah. sometimes Odegaard has had quiet games. Like yeah. if so, like when Odegaard doesn't perform and Sack is not on the pitch, yes, yeah, sometimes we do have a problem here and there. But when Odegaard is at the top of his game, we are going to score goals. So yeah. um, I'd rather win one nil against Everton than four three, to be honest. And yeah. The goal is always going to come. We were pressurizing them. And as you said, Everton never looked like they were going to score in that never. game. Yeah. Against Bournemouth last week, they never looked like they were going to score. So as you said on the, on the video that we did on my channel earlier, if you don't win, don't lose the game. That is how we approach exactly. these days. Like these days, we just don't lose games. I know he lost against Lens, but in the league, like, when, did, when was the last time you saw us? So like, we are so comfortable. Like, we never lose games. Like, back in the day, we'd lose three games in a row, and then we win one. Yeah. And then lose three games in a row, and then two losses here, two draws here. These days, we don't even lose games at all. You just like win or draw. So I don't think it would affect us. Um, we were creating chances against um, Everton. Everton, Everton are playing really that particular game. Everton are playing really defensive anyway. Like they yeah. literally packed the bus. They had like 10, uh, 10 men behind the ball. I don't think every team is going to play um, like that against us. Like I know, I, there's a couple of games I literally cannot wait for. Like when you three games: Brighton, Aston Villa, and Newcastle. Because I really want to see how we do against those teams. Yeah. Brighton is not going to come to defend against you. And last season we played them, we scored four at their place. So if we play Brighton and then we, we end up with zero goals or we play Newcastle zero and then we play Aston Villa, we don't score any goals, I would be wide. But a team like Everton would come to your play, came and we like defended the whole game. So one nil is okay. But the games where teams open up, like against PSV and Bournemouth, we scored goals. Against Tottenham, we scored a couple of, um, as well as they scored for us, whichever way. But we still scored um, two plus goals. So I'm not worried about that. Um, all all the games we've won them differently. Some we've scored early, like against Nottingham. We allowed them back in the game. Bournemouth, PSV, comfortable. Everton, one nil. Some games you're going to need a penalty to win. We won. Um, being well, with ten men against um Crystal Palace. So um, for me, I'm just looking at the positives right now. Arsenal back in the day. I'm telling you, Crystal Palace. We get a red card. We are not going to win that game. Yeah. These yeah. days. We got a red card in that game and I was so comfortable. I was like, yes, bring yeah, to was, Zinchenko. To, to some, to, to, for some reason, when, when we go a man down, these days I'm confident. I, like, I'm really confident. I, I, I believe we, we can still go and win games. Even if we concede a goal, uh, like it's 2 nil, and we concede one, I still believe in Arsenal. I still believe we are going to keep on going. Yeah, for sure. So control, you have to control the game. As Anu says in the chat, thank you for supporting both channels by the way. Anu says, I think our Arsenal are more mature this season. Absolutely. Like um, a game like Man United last season, Man United last season away from home, we were 1-1. And yeah. then I think I took off Zinchenko, someone and brought in Martinelli as a left back because we, we were like, let's win this game against Man United. And then they, they counter-attacked us and scored twice. Yeah. Against against um, Tottenham and Man State saw us approaching that differently. Yes, and if we don't win, Let's not lose. Let's um, let's look for lose, one yeah. chance, two chances, but let's not expose ourselves. So yeah. personally, the only game that has annoyed me this season is Fulham um, because they were down to 10 men and I felt like we'd have controlled that better. Maybe keep it at 2-1 and just win the game. That's the only game that really annoyed me. I was not annoyed at Everton, Crystal Palace. Also a good 1-0 wins. We were down to 10 men. Everton are packing the bus. So I'm, I've only been annoyed with one game this season and it's because we made a couple of mistakes in those matches. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, talk to me in the comment box below. What do you think about Arsenal this season? Anu says we are more mature, and we're going to be debating that. 
um, have, we, have we become better? You look at Fabio, players like Fabio Vieira. They're much better physically, mentally. So I asked them much, uh, much better in terms of maturity, in terms of, uh, you know, emotional uh, capacity. Do you think that actually guarantees uh, the title? Glenn, last season, the title was decided in the last days of the, uh, of, of the season. 248 days, we were on top. Man City, in the later days, in the later stages of the competition, they came and blew us away. It looks like the way uh, the season is, 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 is the, the toll and the turning stand is, is taking, it looks like City are still going to go back there, right? Because um, in the next fixtures, Arsenal can still run away, really on top. Seven points, five points, six points. Do you think... We, we will create a, a, a huge difference, a huge point gap uh, between us and Man City, like 20, right? By the time, you know, by the time uh, we, we get in April, or do you think we will be close in April and this time Aston will just have to, you know, be mature, be more mature and get through it? Because for me, um, that's what Liverpool did. Liverpool, when they won the title uh, against City, they ran away with it. Like, they really created a, 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 a you know a, a distance and they, they they blew their engines they blew everything up they ran away and by the time man city thought let's catch up with them it was too late do you think we need to do that do we need to run away and you know city kind of feel it is too late or do you think we've got it in the um, you know we, we, we have enough minerals to actually go to -to with man city up to deadline day I think we need to do that. Doing it is a um, different case, but um, we all know that Man City usually the last 10 games of the season, they usually like win all of them. So we know that yeah. is um, a guarantee. So this time, yes, um, it, it will be interesting. I think we are going to get ourselves in the same situation where we're like three points, four points ahead of them. And then maybe one person has a game in hand here and there. I think we're going to get ourselves in the same situation. But as you said, the very next zone that Liverpool, after Liverpool are fighting the, uh, with the, the title with uh, Man City, the very next one they went like 20 points ahead before the games were like um, called off because of COVID. They came back, they're already so fired. People are even saying just give them the title because they're so fired. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to have to do that this time around. I think you have to get to like just win, 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 win. Then whenever Man City draw a game, we win. Whenever they lose a game, we win as well. We just need to go um, farther and farther ahead. Again, it also depends which competitions we are in the, those days. Um, by March, March, April, Champions League or FA Cup. But I think that is what you need to do um, this time around. I'm sure if you're like April and you're like two, three points ahead of them, the nerves will come back. The nerves will come back. They're like, oh, this happened last season. The media, you know, the media, the media is always like, obviously all talking about yeah. Arsenal all the time. They're like, yeah, they bought lead last season. They're going to do it again. The pressure, yeah. this, but this season, as I said, We've learned from last season. Maybe instead of two goals up against West Ham, don't just try and get a third in a fourth. You can mm -hmm. control the game. Obviously, we were unlucky in a few situations last season. Like, yeah, like the penalties. Um, Saka had not missed yeah, penalties last season. Like, and like that, that penalty. penalty. Yeah. That soccer penalty, like Zinchenko, if he marked Trent better, it would have been 2-1 to two Arsenal at Anfield. Like if Brentford's goal was called off correctly, like we'd have let So we are unlucky a few times and obviously losing Saliba and all that. So um, obviously if you get to that point and you don't have Saliba and Jesus and Saka and they're all injured, then it becomes different. But if all of, the, all, all of those players are there and we know how to approach games, two goals up in the second half, maybe take off Zinchenko, bring in Kivio, maybe take off Zinchenko, bring in Tomiyasu. I think we also missed Tomiyasu a lot last season. People still don't rate him, but I think we missed him a lot. Like those games where like West Ham, Liverpool away, like those would have been games where you bring in Tomias to just defend instead of Zinchenko. So I think this one would approach it better. Last one, we didn't have Declan Rice. And uh, we are going to speak about the guy, but Drew and Timber could be back by then as well. So yeah. I'm hoping that we've um, the experience that we, or everything that we learned from last season will help us next one. But um, I'm hoping, I think that would be the best way, like to be like 10 points ahead of them. But I think we could find ourselves in a similar situation where it's four points, three points gap by then. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, um, in the comment box below, Let's get to, let's get into the conversation. Who is our biggest threat outside Man City for the title? Liverpool have started well, but Liverpool, I think the stubbornness of Jurgen Klopp has cost the points so far. Not playing a number six, as simple as that. Anyone can say it. You play number six, Liverpool are much better, and that works in our advantage, right? Uh, but also clubs like Aston Villa, clubs like Brighton have started off well. Newcastle are bouncing back. They, are scored, they have scored eight uh, already in a game this campaign. Um, in my opinion, I would say 
I think Liverpool have the, the resilience and they have the quality to go all the way. I think Newcastle will definitely be affected at some point in time. They will be good, and I th expect them to be a part of the top five, top six. But I still think it's going to be Liverpool, Arsenal, outside, to, uh, outside Manchester City. I, I don't think Spurs will actually hold on, right? And I also don't think Arsenal are title favourites. I, I just don't see ourselves as title favourites. I think... There is that kind of element in Jurgen Klopp that can, you know, that has lived the experience, can run away with it. There is also that, you know, City are always there, right? And um, we've got to respect them. They've done it for a long time. So, Glenn, shortly, are we title favourites? And if we're not title favourites and City don't win it, who do you think is the most likely club to uh, stand in our way? If it's not Arsenal or Man City, it's Liverpool. <clears throat> they, they have the experience. Um, the coach, the coach has done it before. He's been close to doing it like three or four times um, versus Guardiola. They still have players there who've fought for titles before and won things. Van Dijk, Robertson, Trent, Alisson, Sal, all of them are still there. Even though the likes of Henderson have left, they still have a lot of um, players who've been there. So I think Liverpool, because they have the experience and I think they have the, the team, although they concede a lot of goals, I still think like attacking wise, they're very good. Liverpool as well, though, they get injuries. So when Jota is out and Diaz is out again, maybe they could suffer a bit. But um, I think they've the problem was midfield, and I think they've improved it with um Gravin Bash and um Endo and um Sabozla has been a very good signing for them. So I think Liverpool will be there. Tottenham, um, I can see people saying Tottenham are a threat, but I've also seen people saying um Arsenal, uh, they only had one, they only had, had one good season, they're not gonna be there. Then Tottenham have only had eight good games. Then why are they going to be there? If Arsenal can't be there after having one good season, people are saying last season Arsenal have not proved themselves. They've never been up there for a full season. We were. So I, we can also say the same thing. Tottenham have not been there in a while, like since like 2016. Why, why should they um, be there as well? Um, Tottenham are playing good. But I still want to see how they would do if they don't have Madison or Son in the team. I, I've had Tottenham fans think, they are wide, like if they get an injury to Bisuma, they are not really sure about Hoybier. If um they get an injury to Son, who plays? Which Allison doesn't score. If Madison gets an injury, who plays? So I think that is the Tottenham's problem. Yes, they have a good manager, um, but in terms of injuries, if they play and they keep all their players fit, then maybe they could be up there. Um, but um, I think Liverpool, Liverpool are, uh, are still bad in terms of that because if Jot is not there, Diaz is there, if Nunes is not there, Gakpo yeah. is there defensively. Defensively, I think they're a bit shaky, but I think Liverpool um, is better. So personally, I'm not worried about Tottenham. Um, I remember, was it last season? There's a season where, I think it was last season around February, we did a show and we were talking about, um, are you worried about Man United? I remember telling you, nah, I'm not yeah. worried about Man United. And you're absolutely um, spot on, by the way. You're really spot they, on. They dropped off completely. So even now, I can just say I'm not, I'm not worried about Tottenham. Um, yes, they've been um, okay. But even them, because people like saying, because uh, I don't like when the media says that Arsenal have been lucky against Man City. We kept a clean sheet against Man City, but apparently you were lucky. Arsenal were lucky not to lose against Tottenham. Arsenal were lucky in this game. Arsenal were lucky against Nottingham. Uh, but fine, Tottenham were lucky as well against Luton. Luton missed a wide open goal. It could have been 1-1. Yeah. They were lucky against Sheffield. They got 12 minutes and they scored two goals in the last minute as well. So They were lucky against I, Liverpool as well. They were lucky against Liverpool as well. So out of the eight games, if you're saying Arsenal have been lucky in four out of the eight games, Tottenham have been lucky in like five out of the eight games as well. There's only like two games I've watched where I've been like, yeah, Tottenham are really good. Burnley away and I think Bournemouth away, they played really well. So if you're saying Arsenal has been lucky against Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham have been lucky against Liverpool as well. You have to... Um, Get your luck as well throughout this season. Every team has to be lucky. But by the time we get to, um, I'm not even going to say January, by the time we get to December, I think it will be like six, seven points clear of them. Thank you so much for watching. George says Liverpool, uh, Tottenham and Man City are all title favorites. Interesting there uh, from you, George. I like that. Um, I, I think it's, uh, I, I mean, he's kept Tottenham in regard and if you, you of course you cannot dis disregard them you cannot take anything away from them they've done well so far they, they've really really done very well uh jay moti we're going to be discussing um the gillian timber one next uh do not worry stay on the track um uh ajain says liverpool are on track he, he uh he's so uh magical too right okay liverpool are on track uh i love that okay um uh, Anu says, Kossi and Glenn, get this down today. If Arsenal top the league table, like with seven points, Arsenal will win the league. 
Well, like like we did last campaign, right? Like we did last campaign. Arsenal will win the league. I mean, we, we've learned a couple of lessons. I, I can't disagree with that. We've learned a couple of lessons. And maybe this that could be the difference. Us, us not, win, not winning it last campaign could be the reason that we actually win it this campaign. It could be uh, it could be the reason. The reason. Michael says, let's sign Avan Tony, but I think the biggest threat um, is Liverpool uh, and City, uh, probably. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Tottenham is a threat now, says Obedi. Uh, for now, for now, they are a threat. You cannot say that uh, they are not. You really can't say they are, they are not. Dutch says, uh, our strikers are not clinical. Edinketia isn't performing at high levels. Jesus is, is, is good at pressing and dribbling, but can't guarantee you 15 goals as a main striker. We'll talk about the striker problem uh, in the later part of the show. We should add some magic in January. Ivan, Tony, Pedro, uh, boys, uh, the boys will bring the title, you know, at home. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and then Karim says, Karim uh, from Koidu City, that is Celerion. Arsenal are trying, uh, are trying but uh, scoring. Okay, he says, Arsenal are trying, but we need to sign a goal scoring machine in January. If only... We are to win the title. All right. So we'll be, we will be talking about the striker situation. We'll be talking about what Mikel Arteta is planning for January. Hit the like button for us. Subscribe to the podcast. And of course, make sure you are involving yourself.